it's not so much about what we achieve in life, but as much of how we live our lives with character and integrity. And for Tiger Woods, his sin just didn't affect him. It affected his family. It affected millions around the world and all those that look up to him and did as a role model. Someone who lived by his word and lived with integrity on and off the playing field. And the word integrity comes from the word integration, which means that there is consistency in someone's life, in every aspect of their personality, character, talents, and actions. And we could say integrity is who we are when no one's watching. It's a big challenge, isn't it? You know, right to this day, I I still go back time and time again to that story of me on the train, and I thought I could have so easily just chose to walk out, easily, I would have repented later and probably felt bad and, you know, Lord, I really shouldn't have done that. But it would have been so easy at that moment to just walk out. And I thought, if God can't trust me with a train ticket, how is he going to trust me with anything else? Who we are when no one is looking. And it doesn't mean I'm perfect by any means. It means that we are the same person in public as we are in private. It's a life not of hypocrisy, but of responsibility. Now, I know that Tiger Woods apologized and he, you know, turned around from it and working through things. But repentance is an inward decision in us, which causes an outward change of action, which turns us completely in a new direction towards God. And what happened to him can happen to any one of us if we don't keep our hearts and our minds right. The key to not making the same mistake is realizing that we need help from God and we need help from others. But first, we have to make the hard decision of deciding to live a life of integrity and doing whatever it takes to live in this way. Now, I've had several jobs before working here in secular environments. I remember once being in one job and, and we, had, we had a huge stationary cupboard. I mean, it was one of the most exciting places in the whole building. You could get anything in that. You could get sticky notes in any shape and any color. I'm talking, you know, exciting. You don't share my excitement. Okay, well, when I was in this stationary cupboard one day, they had lots of the spiral-bound notepads, the little ones. And I remember hearing someone say to me, a colleague who was, she was old enough to be my mum, so in my mind, she was old enough to know better. And she said to me, those pads are great by the phone at home. And I looked at her, I said, but they're company property, they're not, they don't buy in phone pads for you to use at home, they belong to the company, they're for making notes at work, you know. And it seemed like it was just the norm. Well, we need stationery at home. We'll just raid the cupboard and take what we need home. And I thought, well, I thought I'm not going to do that. I'm the kind of person, if I end up, if I go to write something and I find a pen in my bag, which I've been writing something and it's just gone in, I'm like, oh, no, I've got a pen from work. I must take it back. This isn't mine because I know it's not right. Another thing, you don't mind me being practical tonight with you, do you? You know I'm a practical person. One time when I was working somewhere, um, I, I, had a, I was working in the city in London And I had a Christian man invite me out for lunch. Now, the issue was he was a married man. And he said, well, it's a business lunch. And he said, oh, we can meet here, there, and everywhere. And I said, no, thank you. And he said, well, it's a business lunch. You know, we're both in the same kind of business. And, you know, what's wrong with doing lunch? I said, I would love to meet up with you and your wife Whenever. We can go out for dinner. I can come around your home. This is the way I do things. And I have to say, he was a little bit miffed. Now, this was some years ago, five, six years ago. 
And I kept saying no, and he kept asking me. And I said no. And I said, invite me around. We'll all go out, me, you, and your wife. And that would be great. I was looking forward to it. And you know, my invitation never happened. The invitation for dinner with him and his wife never came. To this day, it's never come. And to this day, I've never had lunch with him. And I never will. Now that's me choosing how to live. And when you're faced with situations, what to do. Joseph refused. And I'm going to get Mike and Bev to share something later. Because sometimes, when we're in... I've worked in, in business, and I was asked one time to go on a business trip to another country with a male colleague. And I was like, well, no, this isn't what I'd ever planned. So how do you deal with the practicalities when you have a boss saying, I need you to go on here, on this trip and do something? In fact, you guys want to share now. That would be great. Just for two seconds or three. Because, because you can share for as long as you like. Because how do we deal with this practically? And Bev was just talking the other day and shared a, an example with me because Mike used to travel a lot and I said it would be great to hear from her. <laughs> okay, well, this isn't, well, he did travel a lot. And um, as you know, we come from Guernsey. Guernsey is a very small island and everybody knows everybody else and everybody knows everybody else's business. And um, Mike used to meet a lot of clients and he used to go away quite regularly. Um, usually with women, because he worked, him, he was in charge of 13 women. Don't know why he was. <laughs> so, I'm quite easy, really. <laughs> um, but he used to go away, and it used to be almost like a different woman every month, and we knew somebody who was, who was at the... Um, at security, you know, from the church, actually, he was at security. And I just thought, I don't know what they think when they see him going off with a, a different woman every month going away. But it was all above board. They did stay in the same hotel, but different rooms. Are. Well, that's what he tells me. <laughs> it is. I trust him implicitly, and I will say that. I do trust him implicitly, or else I would not have let him go, on, let him go with that. But there was another incident in Guernsey when... Um, he, he'd gone out for lunch with a lady, and that afternoon I got a phone call from, I'm sure she was a very well-wishing lady from the church, I'm sure it wasn't just gossip, but she did phone me up and say, I saw Mike out for lunch with a woman at lunchtime. I go, well, did you? That was nice. Said, yeah, it was his secretary, actually. I knew all about that one. Oh, she said, I, I was just checking because I was just a little bit concerned. And that was before even Mike got home. I'd had a phone call to say that he was out with a woman. It was actually his secretary, and I knew that because she typed up a book for him, and as a thank you for her, he said, I'd like to take her out for lunch. I knew her, I knew him, I knew it was all okay, and I had agreed to that. But, you know, it's so easy for us to get into situations, and even like, if I hadn't known, maybe, that he was going out and this lady had phoned me up and say, did you know I saw your, your husband with a woman at lunchtime, even though I trust him implicitly, suddenly there's just that little doubt, well, who was he with? And so, you know, husbands and wives, integrity is trust. Yes, it is trusting, but it's also transparency. And, you know, we sort of talk about everything, if you like. I know what he's doing. <laughs> Not 24-7, you understand what I mean? But we talk, we have that relationship. And I would just encourage you not to put yourself into, into places where things can be misconstrued and to be open and honest with each other because there was two instances there where he could have got into deep trouble and I could have been very upset. But I knew what he was up to. But it's so easy to keep that integrity, especially between husbands and wives, and to be open and honest with each other. So that's, sorry, Pen, it was a bit more than two that's minutes. Great, it's wonderful. Thank you, Bev. Because for me, I like to know how it really works. If I ended up on this business trip with this guy, you know, uh, he was just a colleague, but what do you actually do? And when Bev shared that the other day, I thought, yeah, it's good to hear it because I know Mike and Bev and they, they, have, they live lives of integrity. And I love that. I absolutely love it. And I want to encourage us all to... Um, 
to do that because God is interested in our integrity and our character.